I'll, I'll just I'll start shall I and then I'll hand over to you then yeah okay okay just read the scripture I just want to read uh, from Revelation 21 uh, from chapter 6 and the reason uh, I want to the days when since uh, I've heard on the, the news about uh, the Prime Minister speaking about a way out of um, a roadmap going forward and uh, as a nation and you know because sometimes you hear things and see things and you can see them spiritually what they what they mean so uh, thinking about it and I thought well you know we have a roadmap God gives us a roadmap, and uh, and it is to follow Jesus. And uh, like I've often said to you guys know before, there's signposts along the way, and sometimes you know they can go into a cul-de-sac and you get off track a bit, but you get back. Eventually, you get back on track. And uh, one of the scriptures that came to my mind was from. Revelation 21, verse 6. And this is what it says. This is John speaking then. He said, uh, he, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And... Uh, thinking through that and I think we know the start of our journey but we also know where our journey is going to end for those who thirst after the Lord and you know whatever life throws at us or whatever life's cold sacks we go into we can get back on track um, perhaps when I, when I share um, later on not next week after Peter shares. I'll share a bit more about it because God's developing that in, in me to, to try and explain, uh, reveal through that what my journey has been like so I can share with that. So if we I just if we just pray then and I'll, add, I'll hand over to Adam to share. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And as we know, as our Prime Minister is going to lay out a roadmap of how he sees things uh, moving forward after this, uh, through this pandemic, Lord. We just pray that you would give him wise counsel to each of the medical staff, Lord, to the politicians and uh, to those scientists as well, Lord. Father, we just pray that the provisions would be there for each and every one. And Father, we just pray as we go forward that those milestones that we reach in our lives, that we know that you put them there for us and those doors that open, Lord, you open them for us. And I know sometimes, Lord, we get a bit sidetracked, but you will bring us back to track and you bring us together in, as, a, as men of Christ that we can support and love one another in whatever situation we find it. But we do know, Lord, the truth that you are the beginning and the end. And the journey is long and hard sometimes. But we know that you know the end. Even through this uh, pandemic we're going through, Lord, you know every step of, of what's happening. So, Father, I just pray that you would guard and guide us tonight. And I just particularly pray for Barry and his family and for his grandfather who's, who he's lost, Lord. I don't know if he was a believer or not, but I just pray that he... He has met with you, Lord, and he has mm. had the chance to ask you into his life, Lord, that he would know your kingdom in, in the future, Lord. As each and every one of us follow you, we ask you to guard us, guide us and keep us. Bless his body, his family, and, and uh, strengthen them at this time, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And over you, Adam. Ah, right, okay, you guys, can you all hear me? It's all thumbs up. 
film. So, but um, they, I, I'm I'm speaking tonight because um, it's really important that I thought that you guys needed to hear um, hear this, and I also think it's really important that we understand as a group of men how powerful God is. Um, you know, and I've kind of, this is not a great tale, but it's kind of a great tale for, for us Christians in, in God's presence, you know, God's presence in our lives. And it really struck me that I should, should note down what's happened in my life this last week. And whatever happens, just write it down and see where that goes um, with God. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. So for the last two, one and a half years-ish, I guess, no one's really spoken in my family, so my everyone's fallen out. I can't go into too much detail because it's quite serious, but everyone's fallen out. Then on Thursday night last week, um, Kath came home. Kath came home in tears really upset and someone had really upset her so I can't say names but someone had really upset her so she came home in tears I was really angry she'd gone really with an olive branch uh, to make amends and um, so that, I let myself calm down uh, the next morning the first of May I thought I'd go and chat to this guy about how he spoke to people um, but it's funny, I shouldn't have gone. I shouldn't have gone. I had so many people, so many men put in my place. Neil, Neil texted me as a text me for no unknown reason. They just kind of going, Ad, you're right. You know, what's happening? Kind of ignored them. I shouldn't have done. I missed John by about two minutes on the road. Um, very essentially, uh, essentially, I threatened someone seriously um, and I ended up getting arrested on Friday morning. So I spent uh, eight hours in a police cell, um, which is a first for me. It's really serious. I really upset people. Um, but this isn't really, this is about that incident, but really it's about my time I had then and I've had since with God and, and the presence he puts in our place, which I have found absolutely kind of, I've got to say, fascinating and kind of miraculous. So when I got to the cell, my, I was put in the cell. I don't know if any of you have been in a prison cell. I was put in the prison cell and um, asked for a book. The only book there that was stood out other than the ashes of 1984 was was a small Gideon's Bible. You know the small Gideon's Bibles you get? It's had a small Gideon's Bible, and I, I sat there for eight hours, pretty much knowing I'd done wrong, pretty much really, really worried. But in that eight hours, I read most of the letters. I read Revelations. I spoke the Psalms aloud. You know, eight hours, you had a lot of reading done. And where I should have just been, I knew I'd made disastrous decisions in my life, you know, a couple of hours before. Where I should have been uh, mindless with worry, uh, I wasn't. It was literally, when they talk about having God's presence with you, I sat there and I read the word, and they say the word is powerful. I'm telling you men, the word is powerful. I sat there for eight hours reading the word. And I was, I was okay. I was looked after for the whole time I was looked after. I had uh, people who surrounded me. Uh, even when I was in that cell, I found out later that people were checking on me. People were making sure I was okay. They were liaising and chatting to my wife to make sure she was okay. Um, For that, for that time, this is what I'm trying to say, for that time, because that is weird, and, and we, we hear all the time, but we put Jesus at the front of your mind, put him right here. And when you do, each of us, you find life is good. He will help you. He takes away those stresses, and that's what I found. 
And I'm not trying to justify anything here. What I'm saying is that because I turned to him in my hour of, of absolute disaster, he was stood there waiting for me. Again, in my life, just stood, literally waiting for me. All I cared about when I got out, guys, was that my wife would pick me up. She had no idea really what had gone on. Uh, I phoned her, which is arguably one of the bravest things I've ever done in my life, as you can imagine. Uh, I didn't want to phone it. I presumed she was going to go mental. Um, I phoned Kat, and you know, I cried when she just said, I love you, I'm coming to get you. Um, and she just came and got me. She just picked me up. She wasn't impressed with me. She wasn't happy, but she loved me. She got me home, and my girls loved me. And at that point, I kind of, each time, I felt that I've, I've let everyone down. Or they've never, they, I know I've done wrong, but every time they, I've let them down, they've just stood by me. I've had more time with God this week than you can imagine. And I'm trying really hard, and we've got to do this, guys, as men, is don't fall. I've written it down here. As I've been pondering this over the last few days, I've been written, written down here. You know, the devil's really sly. Devil's really sly. And there's a quote, isn't there? The devil, does the devil know your name? Because he should be, if you're a Christian man. He should be scared of you. But he twists that into your pride and your arrogance. And you've got to be careful that I'm not doing any of this in that way. Um, but what has happened this week is, is just mind-blowing afterwards. So the, the event is here, 30 seconds of my life. But afterwards, just, you know, my brother hasn't spoke to my dad for two years. They're now chatting. You know, they're, they're talking. They've had tears on the phone. My godfather has phoned me, who probably hasn't phoned me 10 times in his life. He phoned me. I've had work has supported me while suspending me. Does that make sense? And they, they have to. I've told them to because there are policies to go over. But whatever happens, I think this was a place I always had to be in. I was saying to a couple of you guys before, Kath, the last two weeks has had dreams and, and thoughts of doors shutting and doors opening. I have had for about three years now, uh, visions of me in some kind of cell and doing something wrong. Um, and it's looking now at what does it, how do we pull all this together when he's put his, he's done, you know, he's looked after me. Now I have to look after it, what his vision is for me. Um, and this is, this is like week one week on now, okay? So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, everything's good. Everything's going to be fine. But I do know he's got me. I do know he's got hold of me and I'm safe. I'm sharing this, guys, because you, you, you will all have these dramas. You, there's two things. One, you'll hear about this, and I want you to know I've been honest. But most importantly, I want to know when we have these dramas in your, when we have these dramas, that we know that God is with us if we find him. And I'm right in the midst of it. I was right in the midst. And literally, he was there with me. He stood by me. Um, I've got a couple of readings here, guys. So, um, Psalm 88. You've laid me down in the darkest pit, darkness in the depths. The wrath lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all of your waves. And we've done this before in the men's group. This is a unique psalm. There's no happy ending in this. There's no, like, men's group that gets together and lifts you up. That's it. The whole psalm is just a, oh, it's just dire. And when you read it, how do we square that circle? How do we square that circle that this is in the Bible? But when you look forward into... There's loads of instances, guys, but you look forward into John 13, verses 47. If anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. And I was like, I read that this morning, and I was like, wow, that's true, isn't it? You know, he's come to save us, not judge us. 
we don't have to worry sometimes about the stage as that psalm was we just have to worry are we facing god as we go we often get questions don't we as well you know when 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 where is god where is god where's god when i won't do something wrong where's god in covid19 where is god when someone gets cancer where is god when a relative dies where is god when my job is gone how could he let this happen now we we cover this in bible study numerous times you know how can god do this how can god do this to you well i can tell you god hasn't made me do what i did god didn't make me go mad and, and threaten someone i did that i did that i he has put my feet on a path and i fell off we have to own up to this when we get something wrong we get it wrong we fall off but he does not forsake us if we have faith. And that is just really my massive message for tonight. In Psalm 50, 15, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. If you think about that, guys, it's call upon me, I and you. And then me again. It's all, it's all our personal God, guys. He will stand right by us all of the time i think i'm really glad you, you you guys are online i really miss our fellowship but i wanted to be honest with you i want to know i don't want you guys to see something and go what on earth what type of person is he i'm telling you i'm the type of person that when i got it wrong i'll hold my hands up I'm also the type of person that will tell you guys that God is just sat by our sides every time we need him. And, and that is just a pure and simple fact that someone who's just gone through this a week, I will testify to that, whatever happens, that he was sat by my side right through my darkest times. Amen. Very brave, Adam. If you if you remember, I said to you before, and this in Romans, it, it says that, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So we know that in all things God works for good. So, you know, I, I know I know how you feel because I've spoken with you and things like that. But I do know all things work together for the good for those who are in God Jesus. So whatever comes out of this, there will be good that will come out of it. I mean, you know, as you as you testified, you know, you you went and, and whatever we we have free will to do things, I think. Um, and uh, you know the enemy tricks us quite easily. He knows our buttons that can be pressed, and and uh, and that's just the way life is. But God also knows that the enemy. He allows the enemy to go so far, and then he will bring good. He would not see his children be harmed beyond what they can endure. So. I just, I just believe, as I've shared with you before, that good will come out of this, out of the whole situation. And so, and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I love you, Adam, and I love all the men of Christ. And uh, we just stand together and we lift one another up, you know, and uh, just bless you, brother. Cheers, dude. You know, Adam, I can actually empathise with the situation you were in, in prison there. Um, I hadn't done anything wrong before I came to Christ. I had got my name involved in something that was not right, um, without going into huge detail. Somebody lost about £80,000 on a Spanish property. Now, my name is in the frame as being involved in some of the introductions 
And of course, I had nothing really to do with that. But uh, the police thought otherwise, came along to my house, broke down the door, arrested me, took all my computer equipment away with me, clapped me in irons, turned to the local Nick. Um, in fact, I had to tell him where the Nick was, which is quite funny, because they were came from out of the area. Uh, but no, there I was introduced to uh, take belt, shoes off, belt off, you know, all the stuff that you go through. I didn't have the luxury of a book. I was sat there in a very plain cell, wondering what the hell was going to happen. Um, so I do appreciate exactly what you were going through with that. I didn't get fed during my eight hours. I hope you got something to eat. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it's not pleasant at all. You know, I don't know. I know exactly what it's like, mate. And um, it's it, it, it is very difficult. So well done for saying. You know, that's brilliant. It, 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 well, the most important thing I, I'm trying to get across, you know, one is that I'm not hiding from this, but two, when I, I should have been stressed on my knees, you know, like I've, I've been suspended from work, it could be a disaster, but you know what, I've put, you know, I've literally, with Cat's help, we've gone, God, family, friends, in that order, and it's all it's weight it just falls off you. You know, it falls off you because uh, that's not been apathetic and it's not been hiding. It's going like this is what we're going to do, and then we'll see what happens. We do everything as we should. It's not like we're hiding in our bedroom. It's like we this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it, and it's just the. The, the obvious power that gets me it's the obviousness that's i think you know, somewhere along the line there we've got to have trust that it's going to happen in the right way mm. i think it's the trust is the big one there you know um i found myself you know, when i when after i came to the lord i came down here to wales and i found myself in a situation where i was not behaving well um and i had to go through the situation of knowing that I'd done wrong uh, and trying to work out what I should do uh, and you know I had to pray for the peace of the Lord and I think you're right in, in what you were doing you were placing the Lord in front of you knowing that he was going to help and I think that's the attitude we have we have to have to go through these things yeah definitely fairly detailed roadmap in the Bible this is the other thing isn't it it's not like you know, what, what we've spoken about, which is really interesting, rather than having to sit and go, oh, I'm going to worry about this thing and this thing and this thing, you you go, how should I be doing this? In total, go to the Bible and pray. How do I do this in total? You know, your, you know if you bought a self-help book, it would be your job, your, you know, your wife, or whatever, 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 or being a man at 42. and what, You know, there'd be a whole list of, um, books out there was what we found is you can just go God give me peace and wisdom job done mm. Mm. You, know, you don't have to go to the nitty gritty you just have to find out what we should be doing day to day now and mm. hopefully his feet are going to put me on you know my feet are going to be put on you know the specific path that he wants me to follow Mm. Uh, seek the Lord and he shall be found. Mm. Mm. It's only, the, more, the more you seek, the easier he is to find. Mm. That's definitely yeah. yeah. There's quite an interesting uh, guy I, I listened to once and he said, the only way that he could keep on the path that the Lord had called him to was the first thing he thought about in the morning was praise and worship. So he had to get out of bed and tick on, stick on a praise and worship team and listen to a few songs while he was having his breakfast and, and, and read a few words of scripture. He said, that's where I needed my first thoughts because he said the enemy would always come and try and get in first. So he said, as soon as I got out of bed, I just turned on praise music and listened to the words that I read. So he said, my first thoughts were of the Lord then, 
and I give him I give me a chance to read scripture and think about it when I was going to work. He said, rather than just thinking about oh, what I got to do when I got to work, uh, Lord, will you help me when I'm at work? He was seeking him first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a true word, Stevie, isn't it? That's a true word. That's, a, that, that's not easy, is it? No, no. But, sorry, lads. We've got ten minutes. It's a what? Well, yeah. Nine and a half minute warning now. I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's not easy, is it? No. So you're all right for next week, Pete, to share. Yeah, no problem. And sure. then you can op- you can open up with your scriptures. You can bring back your scriptures, uh, Adam, like he was before. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got to say, what an odd. Uh, you know, when they talk about dudes, it was a funny one because. Uh, you know, I had all my stuff ready last Friday. That was it. I had all my my Bible, all my stuff there. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. It felt like a motor round had landed in the camp, didn't it? <laughs> 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 it's like, yeah. so, so it felt like to me, I was like totally, what is going on here, you know? <laughs> but, um, well, it's yeah. interesting because... You know, the, the three of us have had some sort of uh, drama this last couple of weeks. Things haven't been going smoothly since we since we decided to start this meeting up and and talking and sharing and things like that. Mm. But yeah. that's what you've got to expect. Mm. But I think it's right what John says. Uh, the other thing to do first thing in the morning is put on the armor as well. Yeah, you do yeah. sometimes have to do it twice a day, don't you? And uh, you, I, I, it's very hard to get clarity of thought as well, isn't it? You know. Well, yeah. you know I, th- I think part of that is that we have to find our intention for the day. Yes. Uh, yeah. By reading, by having a reading somewhere, or looking yeah. at a text, you're going to get some message from that, hopefully, and then you've got yeah. something to stick to and have a plan with. A focus. But, yeah. I think yeah, I, I put up on WhatsApp the sort of things that have been coming to me actually that. Yeah. I've got these tools and skills to work on the internet and I feel that if we are going yeah. to be able to put out the Lord's message in different ways, we can attract people and, you know, we are in the end times and this, is, this seems to be our job. Yeah, that's right, yeah. exactly. And yeah. that's where, you know, people are, look, are looking and they, look, they so we need to be a, give them a place to find things as well. So. Yeah. You know? I do I just started reading um, one of them 21st Century Nights books that you guys should have a little look. Have you, John and Stevie, might have picked one up in America? I, and I it, didn't get one. No. <laughs> you're too busy giving them away, John. But they're, <laughs> uh, it's a real nuts and bolts uh, book about um, you know how to do a men's ministry in your area. And it was saying it is possibly one of the most thankless tasks in the church that is undoubtedly just incredibly difficult but arguably the most worthwhile when you look at how many men don't go to church yeah on the positive like we've said before if a man if a dad goes to church then 90 percent of the time his family will go yeah, yeah. The, the flip is amazing and I just think that's you know we've got to think about this however hard this gets you know with us it, and th- this book was saying you know you've got to pick each other's strengths get a hardcore group of men and you do not give up and we we heard this didn't we when we were over there the guy was going if people fall off don't try and find them if God has given you a message then they're just not on board with that message don't flip flop around that's what you're trying to do and go for it um, stick to the plan, yeah. Stick to the plan, and I think we're we're fortuitous in the men we have. Um, mm. we, I think what we have to do is be a bit more. I don't know. We, we don't seem to have any. We we have the men's event, which is great, and then we we seem to have nice time meeting. And we I think we just need to come out with a like Pete was just saying. If we're going to go put messages out, then we need to be a bit more. You know, as a little group of guys, we need to be a little bit planned on how and where we see our vision. So anyone talking to us goes, oh, that's those boys' vision. But I'm not saying we do that now or in the next few weeks. I'm saying we do that over tea and biscuits with a fire on somewhere where we can just relax again. Well, see, one of the things there, Adam, I mean, I've been looking at one or two different 
services put out by ministers using Zoom and one or two other tools. And I've realised there's probably about double the amount of people on that than they would have in a congregation, if not more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's three of, oh. you know, six or seven times in Milford, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Must, well, it must be possible to attract people to what we're doing here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, we're, we're on the peninsula, aren't we, Neil? And there's a hundred and there's up to 150, 160 people going to church on a Sunday morning. Mm. Yeah, know? yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, what's that about? Mm. You know, people say oh, it's all about the building. People won't go to church because they won't move churches. Well, flipping heck, there's 160 people who aren't even going to the church. Mm. You know, they're sat in the lounge doing it, which is great, but. It kind of throws a bit of a, you know, curveball on the idea that people will only go to their own church. They'll happily sit in the lounge and go to church. Mm. Yeah. Well, there must be a way of sort of when we get out of the lockdown situation to find a way of bringing people together. And if we can develop perhaps some sort of relationship using a tool like this, then that will help a great tremendously. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I was, I mean, maybe, you know, we can talk about it, but I just think that when we're talking, you know, if we were doing a meeting like this and we're, out, we're sitting out on a campfire and a cup of tea, what we really need is some kind of IT system watching us so people can join in and be inclusive without turning up. Because men are, we're, we're cowards at heart and we don't want to turn up to a new thing. No, we, that, that the technology's there. You know, we can actually. I have no idea. Well, we can, you know, we can we can put a laptop up on the table, and they can follow on what's going on around it. You know, in front of it. Uh, yeah, that's. I think we should we should think about that. Though. I think that'd be really cool, Pete. I think that you know, you and Neil are gifted at these things, and I think we should use your skills, shouldn't we? Oh well, yeah, I'm definitely. Here. Do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have got a tripod and a camera, and you know, Bob's your uncle, really. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Are we going to, uh, can I just say, we, we do need to think about, you know, lockdown might be easing in a couple of weeks, if not this Monday, and then we need to think about, if nothing else, just getting a pack of biscuits and a, and a cup of tea. Well, it's going to be, well, I've just heard on the news that um, the First Minister has put out that it's going to be uh, easing in terms of being able to do more exercise during the day. Uh, and then, what's the other thing he's looking at? It's, um, garden centres. The what? <laughs> the garden <laughs> centres are open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd love to. Light, and then, then we're going to be locked down again for another three weeks, probably definitely. Mm. So it's going to be a little time before we actually yeah. are able to plan what we're able to do. Mm. Well, hopefully by then, uh, you know, Adam's back in Green Links and we can sort stuff out from there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <coughs> Yeah. Oh, we're two minute warning. <laughs> oh, two minute warning. Okay. All right. right. So, for, uh, everybody's learned, learned something tonight, today. Mm. Yeah. Make, sh make sure you bring your body on this tonight to Adam's next testimony. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and if Pete asks you to buy anything in Spain, say no straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you want to close in prayer, Pete? Yep, yeah, fine. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had to come together once more. Mm. We ask you to bless Adam in his circumstance and we're grateful to be able to see you there with him. Please continue to do so. Please continue to support what we're trying to do together, Lord, and help us to support Adam in the best way possible. Please open our eyes to see what is around us where we can help others too, Lord. Mm. And help us all bring men together so that we can present you to them in the best possible way with your help. I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you. Yeah. Have, have a good week. Yeah, and you. God bless you. See you soon. Right. Have a good week. Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.